Cincinnati seeking their first championship. Stanford, the top seed in black. The five seed, Nittany Lions in blue. We've got two of the top three setters in the country ready to set the tone for their teams. Russ Rose, number one all-time in wins, number one all-time in national championships for a coach. He's already in the ABC Hall of Fame. Hancock, one of the best servers uh, in the history of the game when you look at the statistics. And she's also their set of the back set to Iowa Whitney. Whitney will get another go at it, stuffed a couple of times by Stanford and a John Aku. And that one over the top and a touch for Penn State. And John Dunning, if you're a lip reader, holy... Now or something close to that. Something that rhymes with wrap, like a wrap a present. You know, it's Christmas time. He has four national championships, two of them at, at uh, Stanford and two of them at the University of Pacific. He, too, is in the ABCA Hall of Fame. Kaku will let it rip, and from that uh, left hand as well, gets the ace. Number one in the country in aces this season. She set a new NCAA single season record this year. And watch how it tails to her right. Most passers not used to that because they don't have many left-handed servers in their gym. Tailing again and Stanford in trouble on that one. Opportunity here for Penn State to turn the point. Last week. In the region final, Stanford routed Florida. The Gators were not able to serve them very tough at all. And Russ Rose, and in particular Hancock, knew they would have to serve strong tonight to have a chance. Yeah, so watch this thing's going to tail off to the right side. She often hits it cross court. And she's creating lots of trouble. That pass too close to the net. Part of the trouble is that she hits it hard. It bounces off your arms farther and goes too close for your center to control it. And a very early timeout from John Dunning, whose Cardinal have fallen behind 5-zip. Left-hander will tail off to the side like that, and it gives passers trouble because they don't get to see that and face it in their gym much. Double contact whistled on Penn State. Point Stanford and the Cardinal are on the board. Yep, and that same story, different ending. Stanford's talked about that since it happened. They were up 9-6 to six in the fifth and final set, the tiebreaker. Last year, felt like they were so close, and then it was yanked away by Penn State, who went on to win another title and tied them with each program with six apiece. So Stanford absolutely does not want that to happen again and have that, uh, that roadblock be Penn State. Players said that has been on their mind and would be a part of their motivation from last December until this one. And now their time has come. How will they respond with the moment at hand? And what Coach John Dunning said, the key will be that we didn't get bitter, we got better. And now we are better equipped to beat Penn State this time around. But boy, did that sting. Lots of Stanford mm -hmm. fans remember that. And, and the, the other part of the sting was, why did they have to play each other in that regional yeah. final round? Really, essentially, the quarterfinals. Maybe not bitterness, but certainly some sour notes left over from last year. The series history between these two. 17th meeting, they're all even at eight apiece. They met back in September, Stanford won, but certainly much more at stake here tonight. That went five sets. Haley Washington did not play. She was out with an injury. And Moretta Lutz, the big middle for Stanford, was severely limited coming back from an injury. So much different story here tonight. Here's Maddie Bug, the two-time center of the year in the Pac-12, setting up Inky and Jonaku, the first-time, uh, first-team All-American. Well, here's what we're seeing so far. Nobody can receive, serve, and put the ball away. Teams are scoring at will when they're serving. A Jonaku hitting so sharp. She is tall and is such an explosive jumper. And both these teams having lots of trouble controlling the serve of the opponent. No 
of the run of five straight for Stanford comes to an end, Penn State by one. The passing has uh, been an issue on either side of the net thus far. Certainly Here is Ali Franti, one of those freshmen from Spring Grove, Illinois. A member of Penn State's top-ranked recruiting class, she and Washington were the top two recruits coming out of high school last year, and Russ Rose got them both to try and reload. Megan Courtney tools the block. Well, certainly on both sides of the net, we're seeing much more effective and aggressive swings than we saw with Texas struggling on their left side with somebody like Haley Eckerman in the previous semi with that huge upset, unseeded BYU, first unseeded team to win the semi, get to the final. Ajanaku gets another kill. We've seen this throughout the season and into the NCAA tournament. If you are going to challenge Stanford, you have got to be able to deal with the middles and with Ajanaku at the net. Well, Coach Rose was saying yesterday, look, Ajanaku, you know she's going to get the ball, and there's nothing you can do about it. So most of what you have to do is serve so tough that they can't get her the ball, because once they can, it goes to the floor. There is Haley Washington, the other freshman out of Colorado Springs, the Big Ten Rookie of the Year this season. As Nia Grant serves to the Libro, which Penn State was going to try and challenge Kyle Gilbert on serve-receive as the Cardinal pick up a point. And now Gilbert, the senior out of Encinitas, second all-time in digs in Stanford history, will serve it up. And the service error. Stanford doesn't just have one strong middle in Inky Ajanaku, of course, an All-American, but now the other one checks into the game, Moretta Lutz, who is six foot eight and surprisingly good at the ball control part of her game. We saw her in some nice sets. There she, she is, is getting high. Fuller was in the right position. Courtney has to just play it across, but to Lutz. Well, Gilbert cleaned up the miscue there. Chance for Penn State. Courtney against just the one blocker kill for Penn State. Well, I like what Maddie Bud was trying to do on that play. She jumped really hard to try to get some interest in the block, but misconnected with Lutz gave the chance to Penn State. There's Lutz, and at 6'8", that trajectory is almost straight down into the floor. Yep, and the other thing about her is, as Coach Dunning was talking about, she has a really big window, so even if she gets set low and doesn't get to contact the ball with a straight elbow, reaching really high, she'll still find a way to put it to the floor. Slowed down by the block that time, and now it's Jordan Burgess with a swing. Hancock goes to get it. Courtney with the tip. Bo Cather got a piece of it. Free ball, Penn State. Hancock looking outside to Courtney. Point Penn State. So watch the one thing that Lutz has a trouble with. That's the middle first for Stanford. Number 17 is she's so tall that she can't move as fast laterally as some shorter players. So that's what Penn State's going to try and do is stress her a little bit, get her interested to her left, and then set her to her right and she can't arrive in time. Bob looking to Lutz. Missed it wide. Lacey let it go. Point Penn State. So this would be an example of a little bit lower set. Most of the time, Maddie Bug has been very accurate. She has two middles who both contact the ball at a really high point. It's an advantage for her to keep making that reach. Service error, Penn State from Laney Pierce, Point Stanford. Gordon checks back in, and now Gilbert. Or excuse me, Jordan Burgess, the junior out of Fort Myers, Florida, former ESPN High School National Player of the Year. Really coming into her own at Stanford, and there is Micah Hancock against the 6'8 Lutz. Going over on two. Exactly. Remember, centers always set up with their right shoulder next to the net, like Hancock. So she can do that. She can throw it down, kind of a slam dunk. If the ball's higher, she can actually attack it, or she can set anywhere. An advantage for the left hander. Dribbles along the tape and out point, Nippy Lions. Absolutely. So she presents 
big challenges for any for any three blockers at the net because she can attack in different ways and set anywhere. Second timeout for Stanford. We will take it along with them. Penn State in front early in this heavyweight matchup in the national semifinals here in Oklahoma City. Spin serve that she hits that tails in a different direction gives passers trouble. Four kills for Courtney, three kills for Ajanaku to lead their teams. Penn State hitting four, 44 thus far. And the other thing you can see is from the Penn State left side hitters, like Ali Franti on that last play, they are attacking the line a lot, hitting high hands and uh, uh, attacking that right side blocker for Stanford. Had a lot of success so far. Bug to Lux, hammers it. Point Stanford. Watch how high she contacts this, which means she can hit it shallower in the court. Most hitters might hit it into the last 10 feet. She hits it only about, it would have bounced only about 11, 12 feet away from the net. Nice pass. Lutz is now out. Ajanaku back in, in the middle. And got back row. Courtney, boy, are they looking to her a lot early on. Leading all hitters, five kills on eight swings. She is coming out with a huge arm. Watch the transition. You got a hitter running behind, and then Courtney coming down the middle out of the back court. We call that a pipe or a bick. And she only had one blocker to face. Again, Hancock at the line causing trouble for Stanford. Franti. Burgess. Tried to get there. Perhaps Penn State, you know, Russ Rose thinking, let's get it to Courtney. Let's get the veteran going. Let's let the freshman try and ease into it with a few swings here early. And now they've got their ace back behind the service line. And Hancock scored five points off of her serve the first time around. Whitney stuffed. And Stanford will limit Hancock scoreless on that go round. But she sure caused a good opportunity. That's all you can ask for is to get your opposite. A good swing. Just goes low. Tries to get around one of the best middle blockers in the country. Doesn't work. Boy, a lot of decoys going on on the Penn State side there as Franti gets the kill and now will serve. Actually, she will check out. And then will replace her with Kendall Pierce. slide that's her bread and butter and gets the kill boy interesting that Penn State chose to only put one blocker on a Jonaku you'll see here that the blockers will go that way two blockers go to our left leaving just a one-on-one -on -one situation that's dangerous with a Jonaku she's very effective Whitney with the tip State. Let's check in with Holly. Well, that is something that John Dunning noticed earlier. In the last timeout, he actually told his players, look, they're only sending one blocker out with Inky. Let's run that more. That is a tendency he noticed and took advantage. Service error for Penn State. Well, the Jonaku is the junior from Tulsa who has spent uh, some time over the summer at the U.S. National Camp and is now a two-time All-American. And Coach Dunning said, spending a little time in the USA gym with some of the stars who have competed at this level, like Krista Hermato for Penn State, who happens to be attending tonight, and Faluka Akagadalo for Stanford, was really inspirational to her and, and showed her how much farther she still has to go. And she, had, she just said, she's, I've got a checklist a mile long of things i got to get better at. Yeah. It is Megan Courtney right now that is looking like the best player in the gym so far for Penn State as Stanford gets the kill. Maddie Bug, out of Apex, North Carolina, grew up in the game, played gl uh, club ball for her mom and her dad. In fact, her mother was an All-American in the Hall of Fame at Tennessee. Courtney again. 
Doug in the back. And a whistle uh, violation, I think, Bug got underneath and across the line. Point Penn State, and now they are four points from the opening set. Just like that, it has slipped away rapidly for Stanford. That 5-0 start, 0-5 start, certainly didn't help. Number one in the country for the last 13 weeks, the top seed. They've lost just once. They have only trailed in six matches all season. Behind late here in the first bug, and Lutz almost collide. Both seem to be okay. Washington couldn't find the floor. Washington sliding again. Back to Burgess blocked. Pops it over. Franti gets a rip at it. Point Penn State. Stanford does not have a timeout to use to try and slow it down right now. They continue to try and serve at Gilbert the Libro. Bo Cather with a nice swing. So fast on the attack out there for her. Yep, you saw she only had one blocker. That's why the speed of that set does not allow that middle blocker, Haley Washington in that case for Penn State, time to get over there. They are the hottest team coming in. 18 straight wins. They've won 53 of their last 54 sets, led by their three-time All-American setter, Micah Hancock. As well as the Big Ten Freshman of the Year, Haley Washington, who gets another kill. Micah right now is setting Penn State at a 467 clip. Check that, up to 484. You want to be hitting around or just above 300. They are close to 500 here in the first. Bo Cather thunders one down. That is picture-perfect Stanford volleyball, but they've had very little of it in this first set. Perfect pass by Gilbert. That ball barely gets over the height of the antenna. That set, one-on-one, -on -one, easy put away for Bo Cather. The trouble is Stanford has not been passing well enough to run that consistently. Franti. He's passed above. Now Howard off the tips. Extend the play. Howard got it blocked. Free ball, Penn State. And the attack by Hancock. Bunch of set points now for PSU. I like how Stanford's getting on the floor, keeping the ball alive. But remember, we talked about that option for Hancock. She can throw it to the floor, and here we are at set point 24-16. Nobody expected this. Back set. Ajanaku on the slide, missed it wide. One of the poorest sets of the entire season for Stanford, and it comes in the opener here in the national semis. It is all Nittany Lions to start. 25-16 to 16 as they hit 471.